Yeah, yeah thank you, Eric. Um, clearly, I'm absolutely gutted not to be standing up here with the America's Cup right next to me. Um, I really genuinely believed, um, I think a week ago, that it was going to happen. Um, I'd, I don't know about you, but uh, we have 200 people based over at a factory out in West Auckland, and uh, pretty much every single one of those 200 people came up every single day of last week and sat down at 8.15 and in front of the television, hoping that, that that day was the day and it wasn't to be. But um, nonetheless, I think um, during the course of the America's Cup, we got a very interesting email from one of the members of the team who said, you know, come what may, whether we win or whether we lose, there have been some really amazing things that have come out of that, and that's out of this America's Cup. And that's in terms of the technology. And uh, I absolutely have to agree with that sentiment. I thought I'd start this presentation, though, just by briefly showing you our company movie. I thought almost I wouldn't show this, but then I thought, actually, it does show the heart of the people within my business. And, um, and that heart of that pe the people has been built up over many years and goes quite deeply into the relationship with um, Emirates Team New Zealand. Emirates Team New Zealand's chief rig designer used to be the chief rig designer for Southern Spas. There are many people that work for Emirates Team New Zealand who used to work for us, and there are many people that work for us that used to work for them. So it really is a close relationship. We make um, large masts for boats, basically. So when you're looking at this movie, we don't make the boats, but we make all the stuff that comes above the deck. So hopefully it'll play. Is there some sound? There is some sound. There isn't some sound. No, not going to happen. OK. <laughs> I would have shown you some amazing pictures of some, oh, are we going again? No. <laughs> OK, I would have shown you some amazing pictures of some amazing boats with some um, massive masts, all made out of carbon fibre in a plant over in West Auckland. I'm hoping the rest of them don't not play, otherwise it's going to be a bit of a dry presentation. Uh, we built, we built the wings for um, Team New Zealand. They were designed in-house by the Team New Zealand guys, but we actually did all the fabrication of them. And uh, we actually had a go at designing our own wing before we got associated with Team New Zealand because the America's Cup organization wanted a wing that they could sell to the dozens of competitors that were going to take place in this America's Cup. We didn't actually sell any of those, but um, we did get involved in designing them. So uh, New Zealand has been... Um, amazingly at the forefront of the America's Cup for quite a long time now. 1987 was the first time that the America's Cup went outside of America since it was won by my home country in England many, 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 or presented by my home country in England many, many, many years ago. And um, New Zealand even then was demonstrating that it had the ability to innovate and come up with something new in the way of a solution um, to win the America's Cup. And uh, Dennis Connor's favourite quote which said, you know, if, if if they um, didn't want to cheat, they wouldn't have made it out of plastic, or some such words. Um, you know, that was the first time that New Zealand really innovated. It, it um, produced the Plastic Fantastics, which were glass fibre 12 metre boats. Everybody else had aluminium ones, New Zealand had glass fibre ones. Michael Fay got hold of it after that cup and had a crack at the big boat challenge. And um, that that boat was standing outside of the, the um, Maritime Museum for many years. I think I just saw the other day the mast has come down on it. I'm, I'm imagining that we thought we might be putting a catamaran there instead. I don't know whether we will be now. Um, but uh, Southern Spars actually was uh, responsible for building uh, the rigs, but also a lot of the boat in this particular challenge. And again, Kiwi's completely innovating. Got beaten by a catamaran in the end, but pretty spectacular. The next one, not many people remember this one. 1992, this was in San Diego. The New Zealanders turned up with a boat with two keels. It's not ever so clear in the picture, but you can just see there's a big bulb hanging along the bottom, and there's two keels, a keel at the front and a keel at the back. And something that became extremely controversial, a bowsprit on the front of the boat. Kiwis, again, pushing the boundaries and developing new technology to try and win the car. 2000, not our, not our best campaign, um, the one where the rig came down actually, but you can, you can see in this not terribly good picture, but um, the hula was the 2000 campaign's innovation. The hula was 
an addition to the bottom of the boat that made the water think the boat was longer than it really was. Again, the Kiwis thinking outside the square, trying to come up with something new and something faster. And then there's obviously a number of... Um, we won the America's Cup by then. That's the other piece I meant to mention. But there's a number, number of other developments through Valencia, and we get up to the present day. And, and the amazing thing about the present day is, uh, you know, it's in 72-foot uh, catamarans, and Larry Ellison of Oracle and um, Russell Coots, obviously a Kiwi, um, had this, this vision that they could bring sailing to the masses and uh, make it a TV sport. Believe it or not, when these, these boats were designed and the rule was designed for these boats, they weren't intended to hydrofoil. They actually were designed with the rule specifically written so it's really difficult to hydrofoil. The Kiwis thought nothing of that. They just went, oh, we're going to make them hydrofoiling. So they went away, looked at the rules, fiddle around with their design of centreboards, these boards in the middle of the boat, fiddle around with their design of the rudders, and about August last year, there were a few sneak previews in the um, newspaper here of the Kiwi boat hydrofoiling around in the Hierarchy Gulf out there. That, that forced most of the other challengers in the America's Cup to completely rethink their campaigns because nobody thought you could foil. The Kiwis did. We were responsible at Southern Spars for building the wings. Um, Wings are quite interesting in America's Cup boats because although wings are a very established thing, every aeroplane has them, um, you know, they're pretty well tested when it comes to aeroplanes. Wings for boats are, are quite new and quite unusual. It's actually quite difficult to design a wing that works really effectively at slow speed. You know, wings for aeroplanes work at hundreds of miles an hour. There's amazing software programs developed to model how they work. Wings for boats work at 40 miles an hour or less. They're really slow speed wings, and there isn't much around that actually can model that accurately. So the New Zealand team developed a, a huge amount of IT to actually model the way that the wings work, and as a result of that came up with the design of wing which we subsequently built. And you can see, um, you know, it's very much like if anyone, anyone ever built a model aeroplane in their um, garage when they were younger or whatever, it's very much like that. It's built up of a skeleton of um, ribs inside, and those are made out of carbon fiber. And inside each of the individual ribs, there's basically something called Nomex, which is a sort of cardboard, and, um, and it creates a very lightweight structure, a bit like a crunchy bar. So if you can imagine carbon fiber on the outside of your crunchy bar and the honeycomb inside to give it stiffness, that's how these wings are made. And they're incredibly light for their strength. We also developed something called thin ply technology, which is a, a way of laying down extremely thin layers of carbon fiber so that we could grill, build extra strength. It's the plywood effect. Rather than having thick plywood, we wanted to build super thin plywood. And the Team New Zealand guys used lots and lots of super thin plywood in order to build their wing to be extra strong. And it's so thin you can't handle it by hand. So we had to build machines which we could handle the, the um, fibers with. And then you can just see the scale of it within our, our plant. We have 9,000 square meters of factory. Um, when we had two of these wings, because we built the wings for um, Team New Zealand, but also built the wings for Luna Rossa, Prada, all in the same facility, there really wasn't much space left in the factory for us to work around. They're absolutely huge things. They're 24 meters long. You can break them into two so you can ship them in a container, but generally they're shipped in one piece. They're absolutely amazingly huge things. So as I said, um, one of the innovations which New Zealand came up with was hydrofoiling. Believe it or not, the load on the bottom of that hydrofoil, it's a carbon fiber hydrofoil. The New Zealand guys use nanotechnology in order to make the foil strong enough to lift the boats. The load on the bottom of that foil is 40 tons, and the foil's about that wide and about that thick. It's quite an amazing piece of structure. Actually not built by us, built by um, the other primary builder in the program who built the hulls and the foils, and that was Cookson Boats, who are also in Auckland. The other thing which New Zealand really innovated was um, the twisting wing. As well as taking an amazing load and having a, a, a hugely powerful structure, New Zealand needed finesse in the way that it works with the wind. Wind, when it comes off the water, actually twists around um, due to the friction with the water. 
and uh, New Zealand wanted a wing that could cope with that, and it came up with a twisting wing. And actually, this is something that the Oracle guys discovered quite late, and was one of the reasons, we think, why they got faster and faster through the regatta, is because they learned how to use their twisting wing more effectively. Initially, their wing didn't really twist. They had to develop some um, capability to twist in it. New Zealand built a twisting wing from the very beginning. It used amazing combination of strength and also um, a clever structure to enable it to be strong in one direction and also twist in another direction. We also developed some um, carbon fiber control lines for them to control the wing because it needed such precise control that ordinary ropes, even very sophisticated um, aramid ropes, actually were too stretchy to give the precision control that those guys wanted in when they were setting their wing up to go fast. And then there's a lot said about the fact the Oracle guys kept um, innovating all the way through the America's Cup. I think it's fair to say the Oracle guys definitely did keep innovating all the way through the America's Cup, but so did the um, Kiwis. The Kiwis' last innovation just before the Cup started were the pie warmers. Only in New Zealand could you come up with a name like pie warmers. Um, but these structures on the back, you can just see them on the back wing there, were to straighten up the flow of air coming off the bottom of the wing and act like a bit of a jet and push the boat along a bit faster. There were also more aerodynamic developments that happened through the Cup, and we know also more um, foil control systems. Whether or not the foil control system of Oracle really was the ultimate determining factor, we don't really know. We don't really know whether there was a foil control system because Russell Coots is denying there was one this morning in the newspaper, so we don't really know. That's a kind of factor of the America's Cup as secrecy carries on right up to the very last stages. So unfortunately, rather than proud and, and celebrating and with an America's Cup on the table here, we're not quite celebrating, but I believe that was a fantastic amount of innovation that went on during the Cup and uh, quite a number of spin-off areas which will come from it. We know that the guys were using, we believe the guys were using titanium, which was laser printed to make parts lighter on board their boat. That's something which in New Zealand we've been working with in the marine industry for quite a long while. It's a pretty amazing technology where you use a laser to print titanium parts straight out of a pile of um, sort of titanium uh, powder. Um, there's an absolutely amazing amount of stuff that's come out of it and plenty more that will come out still. I wanted to give you perhaps a little refresher though and I've got um, three clips from the cup itself. You know, it's easy to sit here and go, well, we got really close and we didn't get lucky at the end, but we did definitely have our chances. And the two of these clips that um, I think show you how we had a bit of luck too in our cup. Um, and the last clip is the, perhaps the way that I'd like us all to remember Team New Zealand this time around, which is at 30 knots going past the front of Oracle. So uh, hopefully the clip will play, we'll find out. Um, let's see. Here they are at gate number three, and a question or a decision to be made by Dean Barker and his crew as they make the turn. So the Kiwis go to foil as they make the turn at gate number three. Look at the acceleration and a big dip. Goodness. And a man goes over the side. The rescue boat will be there. Oh, my goodness. That was unbelievable. Not just one man overboard, two men overboard. And there's the rescue boat right away. And this goes to the safety aspect. Everything really has been thought of when it comes to the safety of the sailors. Well, it wasn't a big deal. I was to lure it with Bisho. We were just, get, you know, doing the board rake, and then we just got hit by a bit of a puff, and with the tide going out, a little bit of seaway, and just stuffed it a little bit. You know, you know, we lost a couple of guys in the water, went for a swim, but no one hurt. And a little bit of damage, but just for the fairings, you know, this got blown off by the water, so a bit of fixing to do tonight, but we will be fine by tomorrow. And look at the damage. Oh, we're going to have to drive pretty quickly, guys. What a turn of events. Oh my Incredible. goodness. Turn Let's look at this events. one more time. Fortunately, these guys, Todd, are in good shape. No they question about it. Here is at gate number three, Kenny. Take us through what went wrong because the acceleration was amazing. Just didn't get the foil down enough. Oh, this is all has to do with the pitch of the foil. The, foil, the bows went down, the bows didn't pop up. Dean Barker looking back and waiting. It all happened pretty fast, so uh, you're not really thinking terribly much about what's going on at the time. You're just thinking about making sure you keep um, doing what you can to keep the boat the sunny side up, and it's not something we um, want to really do again. But you know, I think it just 
reinforces the respect you need for the boat. Watch this, watch this. Here it is on board. Okay. Oh, look, I think today was just a, you know, a good example of, uh, you know, the boats getting pushed to their limits and, you know, we've designed a, you know, a boat that we can push hard and that, that can withstand uh, the sort of punishment that us sailors, uh, you know, throw at it. So, at the end of the day, it's, um, you know, it's just part of racing and uh, day one in the Louis Vuitton final is never a simple day. So, uh, certainly today we, um, you know, we, uh, we, we had that, you know, dealing with chaos day. They now bring the boat home and try to get this done and get the repairs done. But race number one will go official, and Emirates Team New Zealand will get the win over Lunarosa Challenge to go up 1-0. Yeah, it was a, a free time day, and um, you know it was a good close race. It was, you know, it was never more than what, about five seconds in it the whole way until we nearly capsized. Team out coming up on the New Zealand team. Big tack, big big roll tack by Team New Zealand. No, it's Team New Zealand. They're going to trouble here. Team New Zealand, can they save it? That was almost a disaster for Team New Zealand. The big roll tack. They nearly come up stuck. Yeah, that was a curious moment. Uh, we did nice work in getting the uh, hydro camber out and, and locking the wing down on the fluid side. I think that probably helped us going right over. We could have easily frozen at that point and, uh, and, and it would have been upside down. But um, the guys kept the composure in that, in that very moment right there to save it right at the very last moment. Yeah, I think we keep it in one piece really. And then, uh, yeah, nice start in the second one. Six to go. This is another very good start by Dean Barker. We're underway in race nine. Barker leads off the line. We're in for a scrap in race nine. New Zealand lead at mark one. Gate two, the Kiwis ahead. Oracle, a late split. Yeah, team New Zealand looking quite strong. Yeah. Well, look at this, 30 knots. Kiwis are flying. Huge disappointment for uh, Emirates Team New Zealand. We saw 30 knots, we saw 24 knots of wind uh, on the race course. The race has been abandoned. Many really disappointed it's pulled off, but uh, yeah, it was obviously getting pretty fresh, so that's why it plays out. Yeah, we'll bounce back tomorrow, that's for sure. So anyway, I really hope that you can remember um, remember the uh, Team New Zealand guys at 30 knots going across the front of Oracle. It was a pretty gut-wrenching day when uh, Oracle managed to close out the cup for me. Um, anyway, the, the final thing I wanted to say is that clearly the team are all not certain about whether they continue at this stage. And um, obviously it depends on funding and all that kind of good stuff. But hopefully that they can get the funding together and we can carry on as participants in the America's Cup, I, I believe, on lots of levels, not just because I'm working for a business which has really close ties to it, but um, for other reasons, that being involved with the America's Cup is a really positive thing for us as a country and that we get payback on it in all sorts of different ways. And I wanted to show you this slide. This is one of those remember where you heard it first kind of slides. These, I think, are the two guys that maybe could bring it back for us in the future. These two guys are called Pete Burling and Blair Tuke. You may remember partway through the America's Cup, the uh, uh, Oracle team brought on board a guy called Ben Ainsley, who's got um, four gold medals and a silver medal from the Olympics, and it seemed to make a difference to their crew. Um, well, maybe these guys will make a difference to our crew in the years, to, the years of the future. These two guys are... Um, well, Pete's 22 years old and Blair's 24 years old. They won a silver medal at the um, London Olympics. It was the second Olympics for Pete Burling. Um, they uh, won the European Championships in the 49er class, which they sail in earlier on in this year. And at the weekend, they won the World Championships, beating the gold medalist from the Olympic Games. So there's no question that New Zealand has unbelievable talent in sailing and talented people who 
Um, given the technology uh, advantages which New Zealand has the ability to bring to all of its industries, you know, I think we can win the America's Cup again um, if we get behind these guys. So I want to leave you with a picture which really for me is the, the memory of the America's Cup. New Zealand, our Tiaroa foiling, um, foiling invented by New Zealanders in these boats, flat out, heading around a race, great on the ocean, absolutely fantastic. Sorry about the result. Thank you.